Hi, everyone. I'm Moria Kavaris. I'm here today to speak with you about ScriptEd, which is a nonprofit that brings computer programming education to students in low income communities. So, I want you to consider the following statistic 95% of teenagers in the United States use the internet. This isn't very surprising. A lot of them are using it on more than a daily basis. But at the same time, in the first six years of my career, of the hundreds of students that I worked with, none had ever expressed an interest in learning to code or being a computer programmer. I want you to think about this for a minute, and in the meantime, I'm going to tell you a story about the Washington Irving High School mock trial team. Um, okay. Can you play the slide again? The slideshow. So this is the Washington Irving mock trial team. So I've worked with the Irving mock trial team for several years, and over the last five or six years, every single year, despite coming from one of the most famously struggling schools in the city, the Irving mock trial team has made it to the final rounds of the citywide mock trial competition. They beat schools like Stuyvesant High School, which has about a 99% graduation rate. Washington Irving's is around 40%. They've also beat schools like the Browning School, which is an all-boys prep school where John D. Rockefeller went. Now, Washington Irving is closing in 2015 as part of the Department of Education's efforts to close failing schools. So what was it that made the students on the mock trial team so successful at mock trial? It wasn't that they knew a lot about law before they came to us. In fact, when we met a lot of them for the first time, many of them didn't even know there's a school you have to go to after college to become a lawyer. So they didn't know a lot about law. So what made them different? Here's the secret. The Washington Irving mock trial team is coached by a group of very dedicated, very passionate, and very invo involved volunteer lawyers who give the students the resources, the skills and the environment, the access they need to be successful at mock trial. The students also work very hard, of course. There are a couple of things I learned from working with the Washington Irving students and with the mock trial team in particular. One was that there are a lot of, there are very big gaps in our A lot of our students don't know things that we expect them to know, like going to law school to become a lawyer is like a thing. Um, the other thing that I learned was that volunteers are often the best people to fill these gaps because volunteers have a specific knowledge in a specific field that our students, parents, and teachers sometimes just don't have. So, talking about mock trial and what does this have to do with computer programming and teaching kids to code. Well, a couple of years ago, I started to learn to code as a way to automate some of the things that I was doing at work every day. And as I started to learn, I noticed that not only had I never considered an option as a, or computer programming as a career option, my students had never considered it as an option. And I thought this was really surprising. My students walked around with their iPhones all the age of tablets. They grew up in an age of an ever-present connection to the internet. So why weren't they saying that they wanted to be creators of technology? And why are they using it but not wanting to create? In the United States, by the year 2020, we will have more than one million jobs available in the computer science field. But if current trends in education continue, we'll only have 400,000 people to fill those jobs. In fact, computer programmers are in such high demand that tech firms like Microsoft are lobbying to increase the number of visas allowed to skilled foreign workers so that they can recruit talent from overseas and fill jobs here. Last year, the H-1B visa, which is the visa allowed to skilled foreign workers, it ran out in just 10 weeks. And this year, it ran out in five days. So there's a great need for computer programmers in this, in this country. To address this problem, a lot of online resources, a lot that we've actually heard about today, um, have popped up. You can go online and you could take a class at, on Code Academy, or on Coursera, or Khan Academy, or at any number of um, you know, universities are offering these courses online as well. 
But there's a big problem. For my students, they'd never considered computer programming as a career option, so they weren't seeking out these resources. My students didn't have typing classes in their schools, let alone a computer programming class. My students didn't know any computer programmers. So, in, on a Friday night in March 2012, I sent my friend Liz Davidson a text message. Liz is a former teacher. She is a former school leader, and she knows how to program. And I sent her this text message. I said, Liz, I have this great idea. Call me back. And Liz called me back, and I said, Liz, why don't we just start a nonprofit that teaches our kids to code? And so that's exactly what we did. We used a model similar to the one that we used for the mock trial team, and we decided we would recruit and train professionals from the technology industry to come into low-income schools and teach students this content. We'd bring kids on field trips to tech firms around the city so they could meet with developers, and then we would place them in internships over the summer. So Liz and I spent the summer of 2012 creating a curriculum, recruiting volunteers, identifying schools. And then we launched our first program in a high school in Harlem uh, in September 2012, and our pilot went very well, so we launched an additional school in January 2013. Our kids have made tremendous progress over the course of this school year. When we first started with them, a lot of them didn't know how to save files to flash drives. And now they're creating their first websites. When we first started, a lot had trouble setting up email accounts, and now they're creating their first programs. Our students have progressed through the fundamentals of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They know about variables, they know about looping, they know about conditionals. But what's more important than what they learned this year, the content that they learned, is that our students now know that they can also be part of the culture of software engineering. And this is because our volunteers have showed them that they can be a part of the culture of software engineering. Our students know that it's OK to be frustrated when you're learning to code, because our volunteers tell them that it's a frustrating process and it's going to take time. Our students know that they don't need all the answers right now because they've learned how to look up answers and where they can go to find resources and who they can ask for help. Our students also know that coding is a continual learning process and that technology is changing all the time and they're going to have to keep learning this throughout their careers should they choose to go into computer science um, because our volunteers tell them that they need to continue learning. So there's one other thing our volunteers have done a really great job of, and that is teaching our students that programming is a lot of fun and it can be tremendously creative. So last weekend, we held our first ever student hackathon, and we gave each student a file with a square, a triangle, and a circle on a web page, an HTML and CSS page. And we challenged them to create something new with the web page using the skills that they had learned over the course of the year. So I'm just going to take a minute to show you a couple of these things. Um, this first program is a pixel art program. And as you see, as you mouse over the squares, they'll change different colors. And if you want to change the color, you can go into the color bar. We're typing purple up there. The colors change again. and. If you know about hex codes, you can type in a hex code up at the top, and the colors change again. So this program is a black hole program. The, the student thought of having all of the shapes fly into the black hole, and as you can see, as more matter flies into that black hole, the black hole is expanding. And finally, this is a memory game program. Our students scraped the um, the data from his Facebook profile account. You match the faces of his pro Facebook profile friends. We're fast forwarding to the end. You click the last two, and then you get Will Ferrell celebrating with more cowbell. So this is a group. This is the uh, hackathon, and these are the students that were with us last uh, weekend. So this is what I want you to take away from my story of Script Dead. Our students like being creative. They really loved making these programs. We just need to show them how to do that. We need to act immediately to bring our students the 21st century skills they need to develop.
find their own success. And learning to code is one of those skills. We all use programs every day, and it's important to know a little bit about how those work. But even more than that, we should be empowering our students to be the creators of technology. Our students, there's a very small group of people in the world that know how to create programs, and they create it for the rest of us. And I think that our students should choose what they want to make so they can solve the problems in their communities. The second thing I want to leave you with is that without our volunteers, this process of learning to code would have been lost on our students. And this isn't only because the content was mysterious to them, it was also because they didn't grow up being told they could be creators. And our volunteers showed them that they could be. We have a lot of big problems in our education system right now, and we have to be more innovative in the way that we approach them. And by this, in this specific situation, I mean that we need to broaden our definition of what an educator is. And we need to include in that definition our volunteers, our mentors, our coaches, and especially those from the tech field. It is not possible to become certified as a computer science teacher in the majority of states in the United States. One in 10 schools offers computer science as a course to its students. So we must engage our volunteers to, from the tech industry to come in and help us teach this content. And finally, I'll leave you with this. Technologists, if you want to be a true innovator, change a life. Teach a student to code. Hire an intern and teach her what you know so she is empowered to define her own success. Or sign up and volunteer to teach a class. Thank you.